Welcome to Heart Mindify. Before we start the show, just a reminder to share, rate, and subscribe to this podcast wherever you're listening to it. And please give us a five-star rating. It helps us beat the big tech algorithms. I'm John Izzy. Change can be difficult for a lot of us, but when we understand what makes us tick, we develop a better understanding of who we are and begin a journey of discovering our best self. Join me for a free session at johnizzy.com. And I'm Kim Cordy, creator of the Emotion Chef Framework, an emotion management tool. Thoughts drive emotions and emotions drive thoughts, but it's our emotions that drive our decisions and behaviors. Find out more at kimcordy.com. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Knowing each other personally and socially for the past 10 years, Kim and John have joined forces, bringing years of experience and training, providing a platform for growth and personal development, along with a little humor. John is the heart, Kim is the mind, and together they are Heart Mindified. (laughs) Hey, Kim, how are you? I am fantastic, John. How are you? <laughs> you know what? I'm doing okay. A little drained, but I'm doing good though. Things drained. are good. How yeah. is, how's, how's weather in West Virginia? Weather in West Virginia is finally sunny. We had the remnants of, was it Hurricane Delta? Delta? Yeah, we had the Delta. remnants of Delta on Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. And it started to clear up a little bit last night. It's a beautiful day today, actually. Awesome. Yeah. I don't know how I did it. Well, I think I did it while I was installing myself, mind you, a uh, dimmer switch in my office. I know. And look at you. Go for it. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. And, and I hurt my hand. And do you know that? No. It, it, I don't know what I did. I, I did something to a muscle and my poor left hand, of course, and Oh, it's so stinking sore. It's it's ridiculous. But other than that, it's good. We too have sun. Of course, we're headed towards another fire danger uh event. We get the oh, fire no. warning. Yeah. No, it's horrible. The wind's, in the, the wind's in the high heat. I think it's 98 today, 98 mm. tomorrow. And of course, when I'm at the COVID site, it's gonna be like a million degrees. No. Saturday, it's going to be 93. So imagine standing on this hot asphalt, cars coming up, and you're like sweating beads. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. Whatever. I wish I had that kind of weather. We're starting to, we're starting to get cool here. So I'm hating it, but um, you know what? It's okay. I I don't like the cold. I would rather be warm. I think it's because I'm getting older and my bones just can't take the chill anymore. <laughs> I don't know. Well, come on out, John. It, it, right now, <laughs> for the next week, it's supposed to be in the after we get through this heat wave. Starting on Sunday, we hit the 80s, and it's all 80s for over for at least a week. Wow! Gosh, that sounds nice. I've got a room for you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you do. I so, do. Kim, what is on your mind? Anything exciting on your mind or anything that's going on that you're thinking through or, you know, anything like that? Well, I will tell you, mm-hmm. these confirmation hearings oh, yeah. have really been making me think. And the question that I'm asking you okay. and I'd really like to ask, I wish this was an interactive show and people were calling in. Can you truly be unbiased? We hear this every time there's a confirmation hearing, they won't talk about how they feel on a certain subject or whatever, because, Oh, I can't, that would be wrong. I can't look at all of the conditions or all of the circumstances and make a judgment, right? That, so they they never really want to say anything. It's to me is stupidness because 
you can look at what they've done before and you know which direction they're going to go because they've pretty much made statements on it. So to say that they could be unbiased, and I'm like, how could they be? Like how they're so bent in a certain direction. So I said to myself, self, are you being overly (laughs) negative? Is that even overly negative or is that just honest? You can't. Yeah, no, I, yeah, she's, you know, we all live our lives with experiences and beliefs and values and structures. And yes, we change over time, but you know, unless, unless you're really looking to change your core values, those values sit with you throughout your life. So you might have a different way of explaining them and you might have an enlightened moment or clarity around them. But for the most part, you carry your beliefs and your values through you, throughout life. And, and I believe that I, you could disagree and that's fine. But my point is with Did I that, have a look of disagreement? No, not at all. <laughs> but my point is with that, I think you come to every situation no matter what the situation is with your own set of bias and opinion. And yes, you can look at the facts and find answers to certain things based on the facts, but you can't deny your own prejudices based on a decision that you're going to make. It's like when the, it's like in the beginning of a trial, a jury trial, when the judge and the lawyers are going through the jurors. They're looking for jurors that think the way that they think. They're not looking for an unbiased juror. There's no such thing. So I think it's really frustrating when we go down that form of questioning. Can you make a unbiased decision? And I think it's just hogwash. I don't think you can. I just don't. I think... There is a separation because you said something interesting that got me to thinking. There is a differentiation between values and beliefs. Yep. Because my, a lot of my values stay intact throughout the years. Some of them have waned a bit. Some have increased. But my beliefs have changed tremendously. And I think that's true of a lot of people. And what changes beliefs? Experiences. Experience, understanding, education, knowledge, interactions with other people. Right. And that, I believe, you can still have your values, but change your beliefs only by having experiences. And when I say experiences, it's not just meeting somebody, it's reading, it's listening to uh, an opposing opinion. It's, and when I say listening, you know where I'm going with that. I mean, listening. Absolutely. Yeah. Not, not this BS where you're sitting there and you're going, "Uh uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. And you can tell that, that nod that of, I'm not here really, but yes, I'm, my ears are, are open, but my head is elsewhere. That gives us opening to changing our beliefs. And I, I don't know how you can be so dogmatic in your belief system. Like, let's just take, for instance, just because she's in the news, Amy Comey Barrett. Okay. She comes from a very, very religious and a strict religion. She's already signed things, documents, whatever that said. Yeah. Documents actually that say she supports pro-life under all circumstances. It doesn't matter uh, if it's rape, doesn't matter. You, she's pro-life even in vitro fertilization is, is part of the pro-life movement. So she's signed something to that effect. She's written documents on that. So what, why would we expect her to change a legal opinion. And the only thing that we can hope that as judges and 
the litigators who show up present experiences that make people open up their views so that their biases are not as strong. Do you think that's even possible? No, I don't think that it is possible, but here's why. Everybody has a belief structure and that structure dictates how they live in the world. Decisions they make, surrounding themselves with people who believe in the same way as they believe. Our beliefs about the world are somewhat limited to our own personal beliefs. But yet, on a Supreme Court level and as a judge, I believe you have to look at the law in the way it was written and write an opinion based on the current perspective. And that opinion needs to be based on the law. The understanding of that law changes over the years because of the time period in which the law was originally written. So in my opinion, the Constitution is a growing, living document. It was written in a time that was very different from today, and it will be interpreted in years to come in a totally different time than today. So you have to look at the law and how it applies to today's world. And I don't think that you can put your own personal religious belief into that document. Because when you do, the document ceases to stand on its own. It now becomes a document skewed by your personal religious belief. So it's almost as if there's two separate documents, the original document, and then your interpretation of that document influenced by your religious belief. And I say religious belief here because that's what started the conversation. It could easily be a number of personal views that influence your interpretation. And when it's influenced based on personal views, then that's where people get into trouble, and especially judges. And those views have a huge impact on polarizing arguments, such as separation of church and state, or bringing God back into the schools, assuming that God actually left the schools to begin with, which is also another argument. So no, I don't believe you can be totally biased when writing opinion, what I can tell you, though, is that I don't want the job. That's for sure. <laughs> I think until you recognize that your your religious leaning or your cultural leaning or whatever that that fragment of you that is participating in a decision, that it plays into your decision because... Yeah. It, it it does. And until you can recognize that, yeah, I, this is how I believe. And this is when you have to pull in those three brains, your gut, your heart, and your You're mind. It, it's, it, it's never, ever, ever going to be bias free is my point. No, I don't think it is either. And the only hope I think anybody has of being bias free is to recognize the bias and search out where their bias exists and how much is it factoring into your decision. You can't, let's just go back to Amy Comey Barrett because she's it's up front and center. You can't be a part of anything that is that strict of a religion and subscribe and sign off on anti or anti-abortion everything and not have that play into your decision in Roe v. Wade. It's it's impossible. And to think that it, it isn't would be a misjustice of the human brain. Yeah. So I have a question for you. Biden's Catholic. John F. Kennedy was Catholic. And Comey Barrett is Catholic. From what I understand, Biden is pro-choice. Yeah. He's not making the laws, though. No, but... Oh, you're saying point, just because he's Catholic? Just because he's Catholic. So I have a difficult time trying to justify Biden's Catholicism versus Comey's Catholicism, right? Because some would think that she's towing the true Catholic line... And others would think that, no, Biden's towing the true Catholic line. And my thought is, does it even matter? It's the reason why there's a separation of church and state. There's a reason why this isn't a religious country run on religious principles. It's based on a constitution. It's based on a bill of right. It's not like 
other countries that their founding documents are based on the scripture, right? So I think whether you like that or not, I think that's huge. I think that's extremely important. And I think the freedom of expression and the freedom of religion is to be celebrated in this country. But you can't allow that to influence laws that are going to affect religious freedoms of people that don't see eye to eye with your religious belief. It's like you're imposing a Catholic moral law or a Catholic understanding on someone who is Jewish or someone who is atheist or someone who is left of Catholicism or right of Catholicism. That's a really dangerous road to go down and 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 a very difficult road to go down too. It shouldn't, but how can it not is my point. And then how can it not, I would say, is by broadening exposure and experiences. A lot of us live in a cloister, like I used to be in quite the cloister in my religious upbringing. And it's only when you get outside and expand that you you change your beliefs. Maybe you don't soften them or you have a belief system, but you don't want to impose it on everybody else. And, and I can just say this because of my strictness from which I was raised and where I'm at today. And this is when you said to me, well, how does, how do you explain John Kennedy? How do you explain Joe Biden, which might be your question, which is how they are Catholic and yet are not, are okay with being pro-life. I would say that's not ours to judge, but their experiences have made them such that they are open to that. They may not want it for them personally, but they yep. see the need for it broadly. And that sometimes is a hard place for people to get to because they cling to their beliefs for themselves and impose it on other people as you were into, I think you just outright said it. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think that's a huge problem and go to Facebook and look at people's posts. And a lot of them will say it's time to have God back in our schools. And that's great for you. Which God? Send your, send your kid to a Christian school. Right. Yeah. Because there's there are other kids in the public school system that don't have the same belief in the God that you believe in. So, again, stop imposing your belief structure on the rest of the country. And that's my problem with Comey is that I don't think she is going to be able to refrain from her belief structure and impose that on other people. Why do I say that? Because she still calls homosexuality a sexual preference. Oh, for God's sakes, what are we, in 1950? I can't even understand that comment. So I question it, right? I question if you are that backward in thought, then are you forward in anything? Or are we having you on the Supreme Court going to keep us back? And if that's the case, are you reading the documents today in light of today's society? Or are you reading them in light of some other society that obviously you don't live in because that's not reality? I don't know. I just keep going back to exposure, right? And and gaining insight and not trying to to limit your opinions, your your judgments on just what you know right now. Cause I too was raised that it was a choice and that you could not be gay. And it wasn't until I was with a coworker who looked at me, I loved him. His name was Gary. <clears throat> and Gary looked at me one day and said, you know, Kim, if I could not be gay, my life would be so much easier, but it doesn't work that way. And it was something in how he said it to me it hit home. Like, wow. Like he can't choose any differently as to whom he's sexually attracted to and, and whom he chooses to love intimately in a, in a relationship than I can. Yeah. It, it, it was, it was just 
that evident to me. That's where I keep going back to if we can pr- give our our brain more to choose from, more exposure, more experience. And you don't have to like that people love the same sex and engage in sexual activity with people, members of the same sex, but you have, you can still have understanding that there's no choice here. This is not choice. This is biologically how they are made and that's it. And there's no question about it. It seems so ridiculous to you and I, yet for so many people, it's really hard. I want to get back to the topic at hand, which is our biases. Can we be unbiased? And deep down in us, we make our decisions based on our experiences and what is presented to us. And the only way to be less biased is to be more open to experiences to other people's opinions, to contrary points of view, and to listen. And I can only hope that every single person sitting on the Supreme Court is doing that. It doesn't seem that way because of the clear delineation of voting, but you would hope that there's there's a little bit more openness and availability to be unbiased in in their decision making and not base it on what they believe but what's the belief across all of the country because that's who they serve not not anybody else but an entire group of vast disparate people yeah i no, I like the way that you said that. And and I don't think it's, I think it's impossible for them to be unbiased. Anybody who tells me they're not biased is biased because yeah, you're exactly. not looking hard enough. Exactly. Honestly, it's yeah, like, I'll agree. tell you right now, I'm completely biased by everything that has happened in my life. And whether I like it or not, I know it's true. And I work hard not to be. But you know what? I'm biased. It's just, it's, we all are. It is impossible not to be. It's how do you manage it? And it starts with, hello, everybody. My name is Kim and I have biases. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. I was trying to pretend like I was in a a 12-step group. (laughs) No, I think you're 100% correct. You know, we've come to this podcast with our own history behind us. My experiences, though at time are similar to yours, are still different. And they've shaped the way we articulate our ideas and beliefs to our clients and now to our listeners. And there is bias in that. Look, when someone asks me for my opinion on a topic, there is an understanding that my opinion has been shaped by my life through education, experience, or whatever. This is why they are asking for my opinion and not someone else's. If that didn't matter to them, then they wouldn't worry about asking my opinion. But they are asking my opinion because of who I am as an individual, even though there is bias. And you know what? That's okay. But when your opinion has the ability to shape laws that affect an entire country of various opinions and beliefs, then we have a problem if your opinion is driven by your religious belief. Simply because not everyone has the same religious belief. And I have a problem with that. Now, don't get me wrong. Maybe Barrett has an amazing skill that can keep her unbiased. But I don't believe that because of the way she has framed her opinions and signed documents, which are in alignment with her religious beliefs. But she's going to get confirmed and we're going to have to wait and see how she votes on Various cases. Well, there's a reason why gray hair is associated with wisdom. Some people get gray hair early (laughs) in life and they look like they've got wisdom, but it's really just early grain. Age comes with experience. Experience is what gives you knowledge. John, neither one of us are, are young. And I'm just going back to this point of 
find someone older, find somebody who doesn't necessarily give you the answers that you want to hear. And you're going to get more honest and a little bit more unbiased feedback. And when I say it's unbiased, it's because you're not seeking someone who's going to confirm what you want to hear. And and try doing that because every rotten experience, every great experience, every great thing you've heard about you, every horrible thing you've heard about you, it all develops your keen sense of you and your the biases that you have today. And to me, this is the, the intent of the subject for today is look at if, if it helps you to look at people who are very biased to help you see how you don't want to be biased, but understand you have them and don't, don't be ashamed of it. Just learn to work with it, learn to acknowledge it and learn ways to free yourself from them as many, at least as you can. Yeah. And the only thing I would add to that would be, watch yourself to make sure that your bias is not a crutch in your life. I, that's an excellent, excellent point. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. That's so true. Biases mm. against you or biases you have as yeah, crutches. Absolutely. As yeah. crutches. Yeah. That's really good. I like that. Cool. All right. Well, I think we said it's a deep subject. Topic. I know, right? <laughs> and I think we said enough on that topic. I do too. John, I just want to say thank you as usual for being a great conversationalist. I enjoy speaking with you every day. Ditto, ditto, ditto. And recording them with you once a week. Yes, it's good stuff. All right, everybody. Well, listen, I hope you all have a great rest of your week. And Kim, enjoy your day. Thank you, John. You do the same. All enjoy right. your son. Bye. Yes, thank you. Bye-bye. New shows are available every Saturday right here on heartmindify.podbean.com or wherever you listen. Kim and I would like to thank each and every one of you for allowing us to be a small part of your life. Be kind to yourself and remember, our hearts tell the story, but our mind is the conductor.